Arirang Prime. In the past, there were numerous catastrophes that shook the world. The terrifying sounds of war, typhoons, earthquakes, natural disasters, and all kinds of epidemics. But in 2011, another kind of disaster never conceived before is looming ahead. A double-dip recession, financial defaults, and moratoriums. It's none other than an economic disaster. A financial crisis in one country has a domino effect on the global economy. Some predict that the world could soon be hit by an economic disaster. It's because people really need help right now. If we fail to stop this, our fears will become a reality. The world of Armageddon is standing at the crossroad. Manhattan, USA. Wall Street is the symbol of the US financial market and the cradle of global capital. Stock prices at the New York Stock Exchange and the financial companies located here affect the whole world. Wall Street is the center of finance and capital, money and power. But right now, it's occupied by thousands of ordinary people. They're staging a rally that's much like a festival at Zuccotti Park. But their voices are strong. It's been seven weeks since the rally began. What these people want is not just political changes. With pure hearts. They want more profound changes. We're all in this boat together and it's, and it's, sinking, uh, it's, fast. it's sinking fast and, and it's really tough. Rich. You know, so there's so many things, like where do you begin? You know, there's just the in inequality. It's, it's, it's as bad as it has been since the days of the robber baron. More and more people of various age groups from various regions are joining the rally. Some 300 of them temporarily reside in the park. Which are under? Which are under? Occupy Wall Street! Occupy Wall Street! To create the world! To create the world! Occupy everything! Occupy everything! The protesters are the 99%, ordinary people of the nation. This country has become a very mean country. I don't understand why the spirit is so bitter and mean with such a conflagration of nasty feelings of people, you know, etc. And I'm so glad to see the youth in this country stand up as the youth throughout the world. The public is outraged because they bear the brunt of the financial crisis, which is initiated by the government and banks. I mean, look, my dad has pancreatic cancer. He's dying. I'm here. He's at home. He doesn't have health care. I could be at home, but that's not going to help my dad. There's people that can't pay off loans. There are people that were promised a dream. They spent, I don't know, $100,000. Now they're in debt. They can't find a job. There's a lot of reasons why people are out. Because governments that are in power need to know why they're in power. It's not 1% students working for minimum basic wages, laborers who have become homeless, and public servants who could lose their jobs at any moment. By contrast, the richest people on Wall Street receive generous bonuses. So our school alone lost $500,000 in our funding, which has consequently resulted in us not just having books anymore, but we don't have very basic supplies like paper. I am an eighth grade English teacher who at no point in the nine years I've been teaching in New York City have received a class set of books. 
from my school. What is that? Um, this is the number for the Lawyers Guild, who has been representing anyone that's been arrested in mass protests. The reality that these 99% Americans are facing is similar. Their future is bleak. The immorality of financial capital is the decisive factor of their outrage. We met with one of the ralliers. Tired, she was about to lie down on the street. I lost my job, I lost my family, and then I was homeless for two months. Everything happened so fast. I'm a sing single woman now, and, and you know I've been fighting for a long time. So it's, it's kind of tiring fighting alone. So I thought I should come here. Wendy used to attend college while working at a textile factory in North Carolina. The stories of these people are similar to Wendy's. They used to be America's middle class. Korea. On the morning of October 11th, New York State, New York State is about to give a tax cut. Is about to give a tax cut to the richest of the rich. To the richest of the rich. We are cutting schools. We are cutting schools. We are cutting homeless services. We are cutting homeless services. The ralliers drew the media spotlight on this day. The Wall Street ralliers decided to visit the houses of American billionaires to express their protest. A five billion dollar tax cut to the richest New Yorkers. Well, uh, they, they march into the houses today. Why these five? These are five of the most prominent billionaires and millionaires in New York. Uh, they're all people who don't need a new state tax cut. Uh, they've got plenty of money, they're doing very well, and I think that the homeless kids and the students that go to school in poor neighborhoods probably need the, more money, the money more than they do. Okay. These things could be restored, and these guys don't need the money. Okay. We are the 99%! We are the 99%! We are! In December, the New York State government is to abolish the wealth tax levied on the richest 2% of the nation. It's just unfair. You know, the tax rate has gone down by 40 million years since uh, 1980. Now they're only paying 23 percent. They used to pay 59, 60, 70 percent. So how much more do they want from us? You know, it's time for them to really pay their fair share. These people believe that the rich must also pay taxes equally. This is the house of the media tycoon Rupert Murdoch. The ralliers denounced social and economic inequality and displayed the power of the remaining 99% of the public to the richest 1%. The demands of the ralliers are more than just an expression of anger. They're becoming more concrete. Is broadening the concern that people have for the vast disparities in income distribution in the United States, one of the ways that that is articulated is the 99 percent versus the 1 percent. Uh, and the Wall Street focus uh, certainly underscores the uh, role that the finance sector played in creating the conditions that uh, led to such a terrible uh, economic downturn. So it's also, it's not clear how that's going to work out, but I think it is broadening the understanding of the tremendous polarization in income 
and then that may become a factor as other policies, some of which have already been proposed, are considered at all levels of government, New York City, New York State, at the national level, and, and so on. U.S. economic indicators illustrate the plight of Americans. The richest 1% holds 83% of U.S. corporate shares. By contrast, some 1.5 million Americans went bankrupt in 2010 alone. And one out of every 200 Americans is homeless. One out of eight Americans relied on food subsidies in 2009. In just one year, their numbers doubled, with one out of four Americans subsisting on government food subsidies last year. Both parents of 2,000 young children are jobless. The number of Americans who can't afford health insurance and receive health care equals the entire Korean population. As of January 2011, the U.S. debt reached $14 trillion. Every year, the U.S. must pay $500 billion in interest for 10 years. Is America on its way to a collapse? Several factors point to the fact that the current situation is not just a simple economic recession. These pictures show the desperate situation millions of Americans are facing. Over the past three days, 30,000 people showed up outside of Atlanta. 10,000 people, 10,000 people stood in the lines for hours in 90 degree heat. 12 people got sunstroke while waiting to apply for, for public housing, but they're happy I, I to finally have a home. It was a security issue today. Freeways in the major U.S. cities are repaired with gravel instead of asphalt because state governments lack funds. Well, Liz, it was more than eight hours of debate ending with the vote to close these schools in Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, and the Bronx. Teachers at public schools become jobless overnight. Some 22,000 teachers have been fired in California. In New York, 15,000 teachers were notified of an upcoming downsizing. The number of per-class students in American public schools has doubled from 15 to 30. Cutting the education budget was the final choice of financially struggling state governments. We met with an English teacher at the rally. Kelly has worked for a public school for over 10 years. She says the current U.S. public education policies will result in lower quality education in the future. A couple decades ago, could have supported a family with one person working. And now you see families struggling, single parent households, two parents working, um, grandparents working, kids working and it's not enough for them to survive and to eat. And just something is so incredibly wrong, that situation, and especially this being the country that it is with so much wealth. It's really, it's really a sad thing to kind of see um, how the world has looked to this country as a model of hope, and then to see what it's become in the past few decades. More and more people are leaving their hometowns in search of employment. Justin graduated from Princeton University. Three months ago, he landed a job in a Korean company. A growing number of young Ivy League graduates come to Korea in search of jobs these days. Talk back to That's how young Americans struggle to stay afloat. And within two years' time, we'll have a, a good... Uh, I also have some friends that are here in Korea now who don't want to go back to the U.S. at this time because they earn more here in Korea, they have a good stable job here in Korea, and it's better here for them instead of trying to go back to the U.S. and start all over again. In 2009, 380 Americans applied for visas in Korea to work as English teachers. Of those, 68 were graduates of America's top 100 universities. 
Nobody can say where and when the broken pieces of the ailing U.S. economy will land. The possibility of one failing economy triggering a worldwide bankruptcy is rising. 대구왕 때는 금융 시스템 하나가 문제였었고 오히려 고용 문제라든가 그다음에 산업이 건강하게 그 당시만 해도 중화공업 중심으로 굉장히 미국이 역동적인 산업 구조를 갖고 있었습니다. 그러다 보니까는 실물 부분이 살아나면서 금융이 그러니까 다시 복구가 될수 있었는데 지금은 금융뿐만 아니라 금융뿐만 아니라 고용 시스템, 주거 시스템, 사회 보장 시스템, 그다음에 새로운 산업을 만들 수 있는 혁신 시스템도 지금 그러니까 작동이 안 되고 있는 이런 상황이다 보니까 굉장히 더 어렵다는 거죠. 그게 지난 3년 동안 해결이 안 되고 단순하게 그러니까 돈만 더 푸는 겁니다. 쉽게 얘기하면요. 소위 그러니까 우리가 진통제를 맞고 일부 미국의 일부 전문가들은 소위 몰핀에 의존한 미국 경제다 이런 표현을 합니다. From Occupy Wall Street. From Occupy Wall Street. heard of it. I've seen it on television. I think it expresses the frustrations that the American people feel. how we're going to make these changes. What is going to, this, is, this is only the beginning. It's time to make the change. Financial defaults spawn defaults in people's daily lives. Just as the U.S. financial crunch caused financial crises in Europe, the Wall Street rally could soon spread all over Europe. It's rapidly spreading the world over via various networks, such as social networking sites. Anti-Wall Street rallies were especially fierce at European squares. Homeless people staged similar rallies in London, Frankfurt, and Amsterdam. In Italy, 200,000 people broke store windows and pavement blocks and set cars ablaze. Hundreds were arrested and many were injured. European nations are seeing a series of downgrading in their credit ratings. In Greece, where the Eurozone crisis began, public servants went on strike to oppose downsizing, while traffic was suspended, paralyzing the whole country. Europe is a w 주요 금융 기관의 신용 경색을 거쳐서 다시 한번 금융 위기로 확산되고 또는 그런 글로벌 금융 위기가 또 경제 실물 경제도 영향을 줘서 2008년 2009년과 같이 글로벌 경제 위기로 확산될 수도 있는 것이 가장 악화되는 시나리오입니다. The Eurozone crisis is not just the problem of European countries. Is there a way to stop the crisis from spreading further? One of the solutions is having BRICS countries such as China provide funding to the Eurozone. But China remains adamant. China or Brazil, like BRICS countries, won't help us. So, we had to have the trust of the Eurozone countries to protect us. We had to have a trade-off. 통해 가지고 이런 문제를 해결하는 모습을 보인다면 글로벌 시장이 금융 시장이 굉장히 빠르게 안정될 수 있습니다. The global economic crisis has resulted in an economic power shift. 
it has shifted to emerging economies such as China, Brazil, and Korea. While Western powers were struggling, these nations have been rapidly gaining strength through trade. The combined gross domestic product of the five BRICS countries accounts for 18% of the global GDP, with trade alone making up 15% of the amount. If they join hands, they will have a profound impact on the global economy. BRICS GDP has doubled over the past nine years, growing four times as fast as the GDP of developed nations, and the trend is likely to continue. By contrast, the United States saw a drop in its credit rating for the first time in seven decades, and France received a warning of a possible credit rating downgrade. The value of the dollar as an international currency is shaking. The volatility of the dollar's value keeps growing. 미국이나 유럽이 지금 중국이나 브릭스 국가들한테 궁극적으로 양보를 안할 수가 없습니다. 과거에 그러니까 1930년대 이후에 영국의 지위가 약화되어 갔듯이요. 그건 불가피하게 영국이 상대로 약화되고 미국이 새롭게 이제 우리가 부상하는 속에서 경제력이 그러니까 커지면서 자연스러운 어쨌든 교체였듯이 역할의 교체였듯이 지금도 그런 그런 과정이 이런 자연스러운 하나의 흐름입니다. 우리가 중국을 지금 주, 중국의 역할을 좋아서가 아니라 불가피하다는 얘기죠. 그렇게 안 하면은 세계가 세계 경제가 그러니까 우리가 세계 질서가 안정되기가 힘들다는 얘기입니다. One entity has drawn the spotlight since changes occurred in the global economic order. It's the G20 summit, which includes emerging economies. Why is the world paying close attention to the G20 summit? Now, is it more severe than crisis in the past? No. Uh, I tell you why. Now there's a consensus, and it was very evident at the Seoul G20 last year. You know, the European engine can fail, the American engine can fail, but then the Chinese and the Korean engine are still running. So the fact that we have a more diversified global economy makes the whole world, in a way, much safer, and as I said before, a better understanding. The G20 has become extremely important. Since Seoul, mostly, the G20 has become extremely important The G20 Seoul Summit represented the essence of the G20. The G20 leaders who attended the summit agreed to make concessions and abolish protective trade. The protection of the public sector is not to be protected by the protection of the public sector. Back then, the world was just a step away from a currency war stemming from the intensifying competition over protective trade. But the world leaders reached a compromise. They chose the path of coexistence. I think that if you, if you look back to the 2008-2009 period, I think it's very clear that the role of G20 was absolutely decisive in preventing a much worse outcome, preventing a depression. I think you could probably also say this year that the role of the G20 has been helpful in preventing worst outcomes. Preventing worse things is a very important accomplishment. France will hold the G20 summit on November 3rd and 4th. As anxiety over the global economy keeps growing, 
France faces multiple difficulties in preparing for the summit. The group of 20 finance ministers and central bank governors meeting ended in Paris on Saturday. France began its role as the next host of the G20 summit in February this year by hosting the G20 finance ministers meeting. But it faced obstacles in facilitating the talks. The role of a mediator turned out to be a big challenge because of conflicts among participating nations. Toward the end of the summit, compromise was finally reached by drawing indicative guidelines on how to resolve the global economic imbalance. Korea, the host of the previous G20 summit, played a big role in achieving the compromise. Expectations for the G20 summit in France are high. France has already finished preparation in many aspects through working level meetings held prior to the summit. G20 국가들이 모여서 제대로 된 대책을 내놓지 못한다라고 할 경우에는 그것 자체가 이미 경제의 악재가 돼서 자국에 손해를 끼칠 영향이 그럴 가능성이 높습니다. 그런 측면에서 본다면 뭐 획기적인 어떤 대안이라든가 그런 것을 내놓지는 못한다 하더라도 세계 경제 위기가 더 증폭되거나 확대되는 것 정도는 막는 그런 어. Then, what issues will be discussed at the upcoming summit? The most pressing issue is reaching a consensus on the Eurozone crisis. No world leader wants the Eurozone crisis to spread further. There will be some form of consensus to solve the issue of Greece default. 아마 G20에서는 우선적으로 두 가지 정도 대책을 내놓을 거라고 보는데요. 첫 번째는 조속한 시한 내에 이 문제를 해결해라 해서 아마 압력을 넣을 겁니다. 전 세계에 이 위기를 전염시키지 말아라. 그리고 언제까지 해결하도록 노력해라. 뭐 이런 아마 권고문이나 계리문을 통해서 압박하는 것이 하나 있지 않을까 싶고요. 그리고 이제 압박만 하면 곤란하니까 G20 차원에서 도와줄 수 있는 방안도 아마 모색을 할 겁니다. One of the solutions is making the best use of international financial organs like the IMF. The upcoming summit is likely to discuss the IMF's funding methods from various angles. 신흥 경제국과 개도국의 어려움을 덜어주기 위해서 이른바 글로벌 금융 안전망 구축을 서울 G20 정상회의 주요 의제로 추가할 것입니다. This agenda was led by Korea at the Seoul summit. Under the short-term liquidity support program, the IMF temporarily lends money to struggling countries for less than a year. The upcoming summit is very likely to reach a compromise because the necessity of a global financial security network has soared since the global economic crisis. The currency standoff between the United States and China keeps intensifying. The U.S. Congress has recently passed the China Currency Bill to counter the Chinese Yuan, while China called it an act of protectionism. All eyes are on whether the upcoming summit will find a way to prevent the conflict between the U.S. and China from becoming a currency war. Other issues topping the summit agenda are the international monetary systems and reforms in the raw materials market. 
What's important is that the summit comes up with a detailed action plan and not just a vague compromise. Then, what are the prerequisites of a successful G20 summit? that from the kindergarten The G20 countries need to turn away from austerity toward broadly shared prosperity, help put the economy on a founder footing, and more likely uh, lead to a situation where we can have sustainable growth. It was Korea that first proposed the significance of coexistence and the paradigms of shared growth at the G20 summit. Today, uh, developing countries grow four times as fast as the developed countries. About half of global investment goes to developing countries. And developing countries are investing a lot in one another. Half of the merchandise in developing countries comes from other developing countries. Because of all of these reasons, uh, development is a very important issue because all the countries are connected, so you can't leave one set of countries out. And for the global economy, everyone has to grow together, including developing countries. So it's very important that Korea put development on the G20 agenda. By issuing the Seoul Initiative, Korea successfully devised an action plan toward balanced global growth. The concept of development proposed by Korea goes beyond simple humanitarian aid. It encourages developing nations to make further improvements on their own. Still, you've seen, for example, in the OECD countries that despite budget cuts on the public sector, on the defense sector, on foreign affairs, across the board, we haven't seen the kinds of budget cuts on development that I think we might otherwise have seen. And in some countries, we've even seen an increase in de development spending. And I think that can be attributed to the recognition in the Korean G20 summit. Korea has become a must visit for public officials from developing countries. They want to learn Korea's development model. This is the Korea Police Investigation Academy. <laughs> People from Guatemala on the other side of the globe are paying a visit. They are police officers. They are here to learn Korean scientific investigation methods blended with information technologies in order to reduce crime in their home country. The Academy has worked hard over years to transfer its world-renowned scientific investigation methods to developing nations and share its expertise. 
La policía, eh, la fiscalía y el Instituto de Ciencias Forenses. Yo creo que es la primera etapa de la investigación científica en Guatemala, donde ya se han obtenido resultados y creo que vamos en ese proceso. Y este intercambio eh, nos va a servir definitivamente para ir creciendo en el desarrollo de la investigación forense. Korea provides consultations on economic development to 25 countries. The areas of consultation range from scientific investigation to agricultural development, information technologies to finance. Korean development policies have become popular worldwide. Recently, countries like Uzbekistan, Algeria and Kuwait have also requested consultations on economic development. Seoul G20 정상회의는 한편으로 보면 세계 경제에 그런 위기에 대한 극복에도 기여했지만 앞으로 지속 가능한 세계 경제 안정적 성장에도 큰 기여를 했다. 바로 개발 의제가 전 세계를 어우르는 함께 성장하는 그런 모습을 보여준다. 그렇게 말씀드릴 수 있겠고요. This is Mongolia. Nalehu is located 45 kilometers south of Ulaanbaatar. It's a small village of Kazakh people. The wind of change began blowing in this impoverished village in 2004 when Korea's Se Maul movement was introduced here. It began with the creation of water wells and village cleaning to build confidence in the locals. Crop cultivation was also a success. The foundation of self-sufficiency was laid. Currently, 17 out of Mongolia's 21 regions are implementing the Se Maul movement. In It's been seven years since Korea began providing development support. Korea's Se Maul movement has spread all over the globe, giving hope to people in impoverished regions. The 아, 우리도 할수 있겠다. 그런 어떤 어, 대한민국이란 존재 자체가 개도국에는 어떤 희망의 메시지를 주고 있다고 보시면 될것 같습니다. This is Zuccotti Park on Wall Street. The rally has raged for seven weeks. The atmosphere becomes especially heated at night. Zuccotti Square is like an escape. Food is donated daily in large amounts, while scores of volunteers visit the ralliers. Thanks to their help, the protesters have found solace and energy to carry on. Um, the food comes from donations, um, our restaurants, personal donations, um, monetary donations, and actually tonight somebody donated their kitchen, that's what they've been doing um, for their volunteers to cook all this food. The ralliers comfort one another and create a new order. They also discover hope. This place could become a venue of a political, economic, cultural and network revolution.
around midnight, the park becomes quiet. People find places to sleep. Yeah, this is my very first day in New York. This is my first protest oh, no. ever. We're just kind of stuck. So like, this is my opportunity to make a difference and to try and do something positive for the world and for America and for you know, this, the, the lower economic class. You know? yeah. We followed college students from Kentucky. They took an 11 hour bus ride to come to Wall Street. Duncan and Elsa say it was their first subway ride and first visit to New York. The two believe that the Wall Street rally will become a turning point for overcoming the U.S. financial crisis. They want to spread the message of hope and possibility of change to people in their hometowns. are going through these situations that I might be going through, it might help me in the long run to know, you know what, this is what, this is what you're up against. Now try to figure out what you can do with that. People see the problem, and now they're trying to figure out how can I resolve this problem. And whenever people start to do that, there's this synergy, there's this, there's this action that takes place, and that's what's so inspiring for me. I want to go to that. I want to be involved with that. If they keep working to make things organized and to make things really go through and they're passionate about it and they don't lose that, I think this can go all the way and we can make a difference. Tonight, Wendy will sleep not on the cold floor in the park, but in a warm home. Her colleague, whom she met at the rally, has offered her lodging. Wendy will finally sleep indoors for the first time in a while. She walks lighthearted. Tonight you're going to be sleeping in a nice warm house. How do you feel? Actually, I may be sleeping in the van. <laughs> you feel Much better. Be better care. Yeah. Very fortunate. She will soon return to her hometown where she wants to find hope. I think today was a, like, a, like a breaking point. I think that I, I just had to, uh, I was disoriented. Everything was just so, it's hot. There's so many people. I'm thinking about all the pain and what everybody's going through. And it just came to a head. Yeah. I'm going to be on my feet again. If the world fails to turn the global economic crisis into an opportunity, the fear of a disaster could become a reality. The world must make the final choice. Efforts towards shared growth and coexistence are no longer an option. They've become a necessity. The last chance to rescue the global economy from the crisis is in the hands of the G20 summit.